DB Power EX7000. This is kind of like the lesser twin brother of the D5. They look the same, but they are very different cameras. It's kind of unfortunate, because this one was cheap. So let's take a look at it, shall we? The EX7000's build quality is pretty good overall. Not really much to complain about here. It's a nice solid plastic, but there is the old school mini USB port. A little bit of a bummer there. And I think the buttons on top are psychologically backwards. To me, the power and mode switch buttons should be on the inside, but I guess that's something you can get used to. This camera has an extremely limited accessory kit, essentially coming with the things that you'll need to get started, and that's it. One battery, a couple mounts, frame, and a waterproof case. Funny enough, they did include a remote watch, but I would have preferred an extra battery instead of this. User interface almost looks identical to the D5 as well, but the EX7000, everything's a little bit different, like the text is a little bit different, the font, the sharpness, and it makes it a little bit worse overall. Mostly to do with the speed of the user interface. Sometimes when you press things, it doesn't detect the presses, and that can be a little bit frustrating because you press one or two or three times, and then it detects it five or six times. That's just another one of its little quirks though, and quirks this camera has. It seems to be based on the iCatch V35 or 6350, it's kind of unclear, they're both about the same, and that means it features 1080p with image stabilization and a fake 2K and 4K resolution. Right off the bat here with this 1080p footage you'll see sharpness is good, but color is a little bit pushed towards the yellow and orange. It gives everything a warm tone, almost making a bright sunny day look a little bit muggy or hazy, just because there's almost no real bright, vibrant blues to it. So I mentioned at the start of this video that the camera is fake 4K, let's talk a little bit about what it can and cannot do. The EX7000 states that its highest resolution is 4K 25 frames per second and it does have a 14 megapixel Panasonic sensor built in, so it should theoretically have enough resolution for real 4K. However, that's not exactly the case. The 4K 25 frames per second uses a motion JPEG codec. This results in much poorer video quality than a similar camera that uses a H.264 codec, which is more industry standard. The same thing happens in the 2K resolution, this camera uses Motion JPEG, and the results are actually not that bad. There's no image stabilization at 2K, and even using the Motion JPEG, with a little bit of its odd compression here and there, I'm surprised at how well it fakes this. These cameras have gotten very good at faking the 4K, 2K high resolutions. And then we come down to 1080p. So this camera should be able to do real 1080p 60, real 1080p 30, and it has an image stabilization setting. But turning on that image stabilization, it kind of messes up the 1080p 60 something fierce. The camera's processor is not powerful enough to do 1080p 60 with image stabilization at the same time. So you get stuttering and duplicated frames and frames that are missing, and overall it just looks pretty terrible. Turn off the image stabilization and the 1080p60 works fine in good lighting, only duplicating frames if it starts to get dark. The weak processor means that the only resolution this camera can do with stabilization is 1080p30. And you know what, for a camera that costs less than 30 US dollars, I'm okay with that. And let's do it the other way. There's my face. This is just walking and talking to the camera, what it looks like with the image stabilization turned on. And this is jogging. And then this is running. I know I'm not very fast at running, but... <laughs> I've got to try and hold the camera at least somewhat steady, right? So yeah, the video quality, it's not going to be life changing, but for someone who just wants a basic camera, yeah, it's, it's totally okay. I do have some other concerns though, and we'll talk about that later in the video. First, let's talk about the other things that this camera is good at, still photos. Pretty much, if you're going to buy this camera, the entire reason to get it would be still photos. 
It has a 14 megapixel Panasonic sensor that produces images with a good amount of detail. The color rendition, it's still a little bit on the warm side, yellow side. Even if you do set a filter to cool or flat or neutral, it doesn't really matter. Everything ends up looking a little bit too yellow. But something like that can be easily fixed in post-production. You've also got the stereotypical action cam, tons of distortion, super wide angle. So the best photos it will take will really suit that. Things like big trees, cars, I, I don't know, that that's up to your creativity. This is an audio sample from the DB Power EX7000. I'm just holding the camera out at arm's length and talking directly to the camera. It's currently set to 1080p30 with image stabilization turned on, but as you can see from this clip, image stabilization is really not that good. So this is an image stabilization test with the EX7000. I'm just going to start walking. This is what walking at a normal pace and filming in front of you looks like. I'm not trying particularly hard to hold the camera steady, but I'm definitely not, you know, <laughs> flopping my hand around like this. And then this is jogging. Yeah, it's not bad. Not really that loud and not super clear, but for the price, it's pretty good. Pretty good overall. Definitely heard worse. Now, I mentioned earlier in the video that there were a couple things that concerned me about this camera and made it tough to recommend. First of all, the poor reviews on Amazon are pretty scathing. It looks like a lot of people receive dead on arrival cameras. So if you do purchase this camera from Amazon, just understand that the first one, the second one, it might not work. And lots of reviews like this also make me question the longevity of the camera. For example, my copy of the camera has a bit of an issue already. The video that it shows on screen is not smooth. It's kind of a tearing. You can see it when I move back and forth pointed at straight objects. It's really ugly and distracting while filming, but thankfully it wasn't showing up in the final video. Little things like this make me worried, I guess, about the camera and how long it will last. The other thing that concerns me about this camera is the electronic image stabilization. It flat out sucks. There's no other way to put it. As I mentioned earlier, the EIS at 1080p60 really causes some problems, and at 1080p30 you do have the proper frame rate, but the EIS just doesn't help all that much. It's really quite on the low end of EIS, I'd say probably some of the worst I've seen in a camera. Funny enough, this camera is based on the same processor as the Campark X15 which I reviewed a couple weeks back. If you watch that video, you'll see the same issues with the 1080p60, the poor quality EIS, and yeah, that camera costs twice as much as this one, doesn't even take as good photos. So would I recommend buying the EX7000? Not really. If you are in the market for the cheapest camera ever, and you just plan to use 1080p30 or 1080p60 without stabilization, or you only want a camera to take still photos, those things it does pretty well at, especially considering the price. But once you start to look at all the little problems, it's really just not worth the hassle. Even though it's three times the price, you're better off saving up and spending your money on the Acaso V50X because the difference between that camera and this one is night and day. Hey, thanks for watching. If you have any questions about this camera, leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. All of your support helps me immensely.